Um, but we are coming now on to pain relief because when a class member comes to join for the first time, they are obviously cautious and we don't do the Jane Fonda, no pain, no gain. You know, we're very, very cautious in our approach. And then bit by bit, we can get people to be stronger using resistance bands and fitter generally. And then they can do little by little, they get better and feel more confident to exercise as well. But this question is, I've been taking paracetamol to help ease the pain of arthritis. Why should I consider another option? And this is going to be a question with these new guidance that's coming yeah. in from uh, NICE that I think I'm going to hear a lot more about. Although interestingly, we've already been aware that this guidance was of this bit about why is paracetamol not as good as we used to think it was. Hmm. Um, this already has been coming in for the past year or so since a, an emergency update of the uh, NICE guidance uh, for osteoarthritis was done. Excuse me, <clears throat> frog in my throat. So paracetamol we used to think was very good as a baseline pain treat. Yeah. And actually it's not. Mm. So when we've done more studies and looked at the efficacy, so the effectiveness of paracetamol we found that it is much less than we have realized yeah there's been other studies that have concerned um, themselves as to whether it also might cause gastrointestinal upset mm -hmm. um, so Mike Doherty uh, did a study looking at ibuprofen paracetamol um, in Nottingham a few years ago um, and published a poster saying that there's essentially the same incidence of gastrointestinal bleeds which is very rare but it, when you're treating millions of people with paracetamol you come across it so where does this leave us well it's made us realize that paracetamol may not actually be making a great difference mm. the other problem is that we tend to give you paracetamol or tell you to go on it and leave you on it yeah and there's increasing awareness that for all painkillers, we should be using them as holidays, i.e. putting you on for short bursts, rather than all the time. Mm. And that is because their effectiveness appears to diminish with time. Yeah. I'm not clever enough to be able to explain why. I suspect <laughs> we're still learning about that. But in short, what are we saying with paracetamol? We're saying that there's better stuff to be used. And if you are on it all the time for arthritis, well, actually, we should be thinking about why we're doing that, because we're probably a not using the best treatment and yeah. B, you shouldn't be on it for all that time. And that is what's come out with this latest guidance. Yeah. So what should we use instead? Well, if we're looking at what is prescribable drugs on the NHS, then we're actually saying topical non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs for short. So these are things like ibuprofen and Voltarol. Yeah. Um, now, that's great if you have one joint that's particularly painful or a couple, maybe three. But you don't want to be slapping it all over your body yeah. because you'd run out before you'd even got to all your joints and it doesn't make sense. So there has to be a good dose of common sense within this. So we talk about topical for when it is an isolated joint or two. The reason being that it's just as effective in many cases as an oral NSAID without the side effects, provided you don't overuse it and over apply. So how much do we talk about? Well, we talk about an eraser tip um, roughly that you put on your finger and then you rub on your joint. If we're talking about multiple joints, and when you can get that when you have a flare of arthritis particularly, then we might be talking about an oral NSAID with maybe some form of gastric protection, which is what we call a proton pump inhibitor, such as lansoprazole or omeprazole. And that's to try and stop um, bleeds. But when you look at the latest guidance, the evidence is that, that whilst that might be effective for bleeds, it can cause other problems. So you should discuss this with your GP or your pharmacist because Nexium is an over-the-counter PPI. So you don't have to see a GP. You can buy some of these uh, protective drugs um, over-the-counter. 
what about supplements? Um, so are there anything that you can take that is not necessarily considered a drug, but which may have pain relieving properties? Well, there's a number. GOPO is a form of rosehip and that has pain relieving properties um, with clinical trials. So I'm only going to be talking about things which have got evidence base. Um, different forms of rosehip have, but GOPO, when you look at the evidence from what I've seen, appears to have very good evidence and um, well-run trials, although they're not the largest trials. If we look at ginger, that again um, is, can be very effective. Um, both of these appear to be more effective than paracetamol, but less effective than ibuprofen. Other ones, so omega-3 fat, fatty oils can be useful and you find these in fish, but you can also find them in things like walnuts and such like, I believe. Um, go and have a look at the Versus Arthritis website because it will give you links to, especially if you're vegetarian or vegan, different foodstuffs that will con uh, contain them. I'm afraid it's not, all, it's not something that I specialize in that bit of knowledge. Um, if we talk about cod liver oil, it doesn't work on your joints, according to the evidence. So that old wives tale and what we used to say is not necessarily correct. We're talking about omega-3 oils. Glucosamine, chondroitin, do they work? Well, if we're looking at a population base, probably not. Mm. That's the overall assessment of the data. But this again is hampered by trials that have not been particularly well done in some cases. Mm -hmm. And the ones that seem to be better done are sometimes the ones that have been run by the manufacturers according to versus arthritis website and such like. But what is good for the population or isn't good for the population is very different to what might be good for you. Mm. So, when we're talking about medicine these days, if we're talking about evidence base, we're talking about treating 100,000 people, what's right? But you're not interested in that as a patient, you're interested in what's right for you. And so I often say to patients, here's the evidence, but what's right for you? Now, Could go on all day because all of these supplements have got lots of information but yeah. just going back to the ones where there's probably the most information um i would focus probably on ginger and rosehip mm -hmm. rosehip appears to have not just analgesic properties so pain killing properties but it also according to lab-based studies has anti-inflammatory properties and seems to have affect gene expression. Now I'm being very careful in what I'm saying because we haven't necessarily um, done this for clinical studies and we are only talking for these in vitro ones um, which are the lab-based studies for GOPO. So the GOPO is a supplement. Um, it's derived from rosehip using all of the rosehip uh, berry that appears to have some of these benefits. And one of the reasons I've, I'm involved with GOPO is because there's good clinical trials and good preclinical trials being done. Um, and therefore I'm happy to, to support it. But it's very difficult to say, is this going to work for, for everybody? The clinical trials, when we've looked at that and we've done combination of clinical trials where we could call a meta-analysis um, show that it does seem to have a, a, an overall effect um, that's very positive in favor of treating pain and actually more powerful than paracetamol. The other benefits of the anti-inflammatory properties and such like probably take longer term to develop and that's certainly the case when you talk to patients. So they seem to say that the pain works better and faster the other bits on sort of um, better um, feelings of quality of life and, and such like, and better 
aspects with their knee seem to come on if they're going to come on later on. But when you stop it, some of the clinical trials show that there appears to be a long um, after effect of positivity. So there's something going on. More research is always useful. Um, and, and it doesn't matter how much research you've done, even if you've done thousands of patients, we're always going to say that. Ginger. So I nearly finished the question. Sorry, I know it's very long. Um, ginger, it, how does that work? Well, again, it seems to work on, on the pain. Um, I'm less knowledgeable about the studies on this, um, but there's good evidence that it works on the pain. It's more powerful than paracetamol, um, and again, well tolerated. So to go back to the question of this patient, will I be asked to stop my paracetamol? Well, if it's just there for osteoarthritis, and if we're following the evidence base, probably. But if you're on it for other reasons, or if actually you've found that you've tried lots of other things, then this is where we need to individualize the thing. But don't be surprised if we are saying we need to relook at things, which we should be anyway. Yeah. And if someone wants to take a supplement, should they check with their pharmacist or doctor if they're on other medication? It's certainly worth doing that. So, um, Again, different supplements can impact on things like warfarin. Yeah. So um, chondroitin can affect you, uh, your warfarin. Um, I don't believe rosehip does. And I don't believe, I think ginger might. Um, so again, go and talk. Often the pharmacists are better than GPs because this is their pure area yeah. of interest. Um, and there's very good research come out over the last two decades from specialized clinical pharmacists looking at supplements in all sorts of different sectors of medicine but then I often will phone up a pharmacist and say just need a word of advice please yeah. you know any interactions um, that you're aware of other than what I can find in my my books. Yeah. 